Fingers Bent is a 45 minute performance for young people in years six, seven and eight, so age 10 to 13. It's designed to work for young people in those age groups because it's at that time really that young people are making a big transition in their lives or have just made it. So they're either in year six and about to go up to secondary school or they're in year seven and eight and they've just made that transition into secondary school and they're making some really important choices about their behaviour, about the people they spend their time with, the activities they engage in both in school and outside of school. And those activities can actually have a really big impact on their education, their schooling, their home life, and really, most importantly, on where they end up and the people that they become. The play revolves around three young people, Tag, Lip and Jez. They've all just started secondary school. In fact, the first scene of the play is their first day at secondary school. Oh, we're gonna get beaten up, I know we are. No, we're not. Look, I don't even know where we're supposed to be. Do you think that is an M or an N? <laughs> it's an M, but she got a new subject called mathematics. This place is like a maze. I'm never gonna get the hang of it. And do you know what? We're not even in the same classes most of the time. Yeah, we've got English together. We have that like every day. Tag and Jez have known each other forever. They've been best friends from primary school, always together. Their parents are very close. And then Lip is introduced into their lives and she is a completely different sort of person. I think Jez is strong enough to make his decisions for himself. I think what he sees in Lip is this excitement and fun aspect which he doesn't have a lot of, and I think that's to do with his family life, and he finds it in Lip. She's got a very different family background, um, a more troubled family background, she's much more streetwise, and she, through various scenes in the play and through small incidents that build into much bigger incidents, takes Jez into a different world that he perhaps hadn't been in before. Some kids from a different area came and they started chucking stones at a neighbour's car. Did they smash the windows in? No, no, uh, but all the neighbours came out, I mean they were dead upset, we had to start a neighbourhood watch. Alright. Oh, you want to see me throwing stones? I am like the best, like the best out of like anyone. The stuff that uh, Lip gets Jez um, involved in is um, quite at first, just sorts of little things where you think it wouldn't be that bad, like throwing stones at a bin, then it'll be like going on to throwing stones at a window. Yeah. So actually, no, listen, what have I done? No watches! It takes him into a world where he's graffitiing, where he's hanging out with older kids, where pressure is put on him to drink sometimes. And these events escalate as the play goes on towards the end of the piece where it's bonfire night and they are at an unorganised firework display with some older children who have got their hands on some fireworks illegally and things you know, go terribly wrong. Like, you know, I mean, get a bit closer to it, like, it'll be fine. Come on, have you laughed? Yeah. Come on, Tag. Not scared, are you? Because <laughs> I'm not scared, it's just a bit violent. At the end, when we shout Jez, as we run off as the firework hits Jez, um, there's often, you can hear some gasps and things, and then when you come out of the final scene, it's almost like they know something something terrible has happened and they're just waiting to find out the full extent of that. I keep expecting him to knock at ours, you know, to help me with the comic or tell me some stupid story about what him and Lip have been up to. Sometimes I'll see something or I'll think of something to tell him and then I realise he's not there. Stupid that, isn't it? It's been nearly six weeks now since Bonfire Night. I still sort of dream about it every night. For like a minute, when I wake up, I think that it isn't real, but it is. The final scene develops quite slowly, giving them little bits of information. You can see them taking it on board and we have had a few tears and we've had a few heads in hands and that, as an actor, that's great to be able to see and think, yes, they're believing it and thinking, oh no, this has actually happened. I found it really shocking when Jez got injured because in like most plays, they just sort of kill them off. But with this, he was still sort of alive, which I think's worse because he's got to live with it. And so was his friends, like seeing him like that. Seeing him was a shock. He looks so different. His mum was crying the whole time I was there. She said that the doctors have said 
They don't think he'll ever look the same again. We had this special assembly in school, you know, to warn us about the dangers of fireworks. Miss Horton was crying then. Well, when she said he'd lost a sight in one eye. His hair's like completely gone on one side. I don't think it'll ever grow back. His hands were that badly burned that they said he might not even be able to use them again. The worst thing wasn't the way that he looked. It was just him. He wasn't Jez. He just sat there staring at the TV. He didn't even look at me. It was just so stupid. And it all happened so fast. Everything has changed now. I've lost my best friend. I just really miss him. People don't really expect that a performance for young people is going to be something that's powerful, dramatic, engaging. And it is all of those things, really. It's, it, it's something that is, it's designed to be theatre for young people and that needs to not be patronising. It needs to be engaging. It needs to draw them in. And it really does do all of those things. My favourite part of the play was at the end when Jez got hit by the firework because it made me feel like I was Jez and it was like really powerful and I felt like crying because it was really strong. Well, there was a couple of messages I thought. Uh, one, one of the messages was uh, be careful what you do when you go out outside with your friends and um, if, just make sure when you, when you make choices always look at the consequences to come with that choice. So it is about making decisions and being aware of consequences of those decisions, not just on yourself, but your community and your friends and your family. And maybe about, we have got the power as young people, I suppose, and the young people that watch it need to know they've got the power to make those decisions and they don't have to be influenced by anybody. As an organisation, we strongly believe that a performance should be followed up by a workshop. The performance brings up so many issues for young people, some of them very subtly around um, risk-taking behaviour, making positive choices, drinking, smoking, friendships. And often young people really need a forum to talk about that afterwards. Um, and that's why it's important that the workshop happens, to give them that hour to absorb things, to ask questions, to explore their feelings about what's happened to the characters, to explore their understanding of these issues. The workshop is a really enjoyable part of it, um, and because it is finding out what they've learned from what they've just seen. Um, and every single workshop is different that you do, every single one, because the kids have picked up on different aspects of of what's happened in the play. We do a decision task uh, where we read out a statement and they have to decide whether they agree, disagree or not quite sure and hopefully that will spark quite a good discussion. Depending on what you feel like the question, on the question, you have to go to yes, no and maybe like if one of the questions was do you think graffiti is bad? You had no, yes and maybe and you have to make a point of why you thought that and why you're in that group. At any point if you want to change sides you agree with someone that something said, someone said something, you think, oh yeah, that's a great point. You can switch sides. It's all about their choices and their decisions and what they think and, and it's a bit of a debate as well that they can have with, with their classmates and, and with others us as well if they don't agree with something. And we can just sort of set them on the right track and go, well, it's more, more about your choices and making the right choices. And it often gives them an opportunity to talk about legality as well, to ask questions that they previously perhaps didn't know who to ask. What is the legal age limit for alcohol, for fireworks? You know, what is classed as criminal damage. There are all these questions that perhaps you wouldn't expect young people to ask, but they want to know the answers to. We've been talking about going up to secondary school for quite a long time, like all through year six we've been talking about it, and I've got like really nervous about it, but Jess is always like the calm one and always sort of said it'll be all right. The final bit is hot seating, and we hot seat my character Tag and Lip and they get to ask them any questions about what they've seen in the play and after the play. Questions about the play, how, why did you do them things, how you reacted, why did you react like that, how you feel and everything. And that's a really nice chance for them to obviously talk to the characters. The hot seat was the favourite part of the workshop because like, um, it got everyone involved and you got to think like, what the characters think 
characters are forward. The workshop is a crucial part of the performance. And I think we're in a great position in that, as an organisation, we are specialists in delivering drama workshops to young people. And the workshop and the performance really are two halves of a whole. We tour Fingers Burnt for, for quite a short period of time each year um, in September, October and November. And that's designed really to link in with the difficult periods of Halloween, Bonfire Night, Mischief Night, where we know there's issues for communities, for schools, for the police in terms of young people's behaviour. This year alone, in 2009, we estimate that around 2,500 young people have seen the performance and participated in the workshop. That's a massive amount of young people to be touched by this performance and, and for it to have an impact on perhaps the way they think, their attitudes, their behaviours towards the choices they make themselves. And we're immensely proud of that at Altru. It's important to us that we're making a difference to the lives of young people, not just in the North West, but across the country as a whole. And I really feel Fingers Bent does that.